Funding for this program is brought to you by the Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund and the citizens of Minnesota. The St. Louis River. It's our past, our present, and our future. The story of this place floats on the current of the St. Louis River, from the headwaters in Seven Beavers Lake, through farms, towns, and settlements, through Brookston, Cloquet, and the Duluth Superior Harbors. My name is Emily Lockling. I'm a student researcher from Fond du Lac Tribal and Community College, and I've lived by the St. Louis River my entire life. Industrial expansion built burgeoning communities. Businesses in the estuary provided growth, jobs, and in many cases, created havoc with the natural environment. My name is Joel Hoffman. I'm a supervisory research biologist for the US EPA's Office of Research and Development. We have a laboratory in Duluth. So I have spent um, a good part of the last 15 years studying the history of the St. Louis River, understanding the pollution impacts to the river, and working to understand what we need to know to clean it up. What we know or have been able to infer from the data that we have from the early 1900s, 1920s, and 1940s, is that somewhere between 1905 and 1906 and 1920, the river became extremely degraded. The first run of walleye moving in from Lake Superior to the St. Louis River failed around 1908, which is our first good indication that water quality had become very poor. I mean, such that the fish, you know, turned around um, to leave the area. And then we know that by the early 20s, the lake sturgeon were basically gone. All aquatic life needs to breathe. Many of those organisms need to breathe underwater, right? Like fish that have gills. And so they're extracting the oxygen they need to breathe from the water. So when we take oxygen out of the water, it stresses those organisms. It'd be like you or me not being able to breathe. We would become um, very stressed. That was the key element here. Um, in many ways was, was that the oxygen was very, very low in these areas. They went to go look for living organisms in the bottom of Spirit Lake and couldn't find any. So that we know by the time we hit into the mid twenties, there is an extensive, what we call dead zone that is stretching um, between somewhere around Fond du Lac, probably into and around Grassy Point and St. Louis Bay. So near the heart of the city of Duluth and the, and the heart of Superior. So this was really a large, persistent and regular dead zone within the St. Louis River. The scientific term is called biological oxygen demand. It was a measure of how much oxygen the pollutants we were putting into the river would consume. And it was often used for sewage because in this era, we did not treat sewage. It was held in ponds on the side of the river. Um, and those ponds were not very well contained. And so when big rain events happened, they routinely spilled into the river um, with either you know partially processed or essentially raw sewage going into the river. And so that material had a very high bi biological oxygen demand. Bacteria in the waste needed oxygen to live and it would it would consume it and it would consume it so fast it couldn't be replaced. And then the aquatic organisms in the river, the bugs, the fish, wouldn't have any oxygen to breathe. In that same era, we had many pulp mills and other facilities that produced waste that was organic. And because it was organic, it was gonna break down in the river, have a bacterial component that was gonna consume oxygen as part of that process. And so there were many other kinds of waste that were also being put into the river directly without treatment that had a hot, very high biological oxygen demand, um, all of which we believe contributed um, to this uh, long-term dead zone in the river. Our records from the state show that there is routinely low oxygen all the way through the 60s. Um, and by the time we got to the late 60s, early 70s, it had started to get a bit better. So we can imagine that probably the worst of the impacts based on the data we have occurred from around 1905, 1908 to probably around 1965. The river's come a long ways back. The scientists and the managers are still working on restoring it. The job is not done. 
If you think about it, we spent, you know, we'll call it 60 years with a part of the river that was dead. That's, that's hard for us to imagine today, but we are now another, you know, a human generation, 30 more years into recovery, and we're starting to see a lot of good things happen. You are the keepers of this dynamic ecosystem. On the Water Trail begins to uncover this new chapter with science and a deeper appreciation of the river and its mysteries. The wildlife, plants, and history are part of the story. As residents of the St. Louis River watershed, you are too. Programming is supported by Western Lake Superior Sanitary District, innovating solutions and reducing mercury pollution in the St. Louis River through research and community programs. Online at WLSSD.com.